<laughs> Let's see what pops out of this. Ooh. Not good. Hey everyone, today I'm gonna to be working with Stable Diffusion. I'm gonna show you how to set it up and get a project going. If I am very honest, I don't have tons of experience with Stable Diffusion. I do have uh, quite a bit of experience with Disco Diffusion. I know the settings that will at least get some stuff started so you can follow along. And maybe once you get started, maybe you can dive into the intricacies of how to get the desired effect and look. So yeah, let's get started. So a lot of this stuff works similar to Disco Diffusion. So I do have a tutorial on that if you want to look into that, mainly about Google Colab and how that works and how you can get started with that. But if you're familiar with Google Colab, then this is right at the place where you want to be. So I'll put a link in the description for this Stable Diffusion session. Something that's a little different from Disco Diffusion, you have to manually download something so that Stable Diffusion will work. So the thing you have to download and I also put a link to this, is this file right here. So when you click on the link, it's gonna show you here, this file, you have to download it. Uh, the file is quite big, I believe it's like four, almost four gigabytes. But before you download it, uh, you might have to create an account. When I came in here and tried to download this, they asked to create an account. So I just created an account, downloaded it, and then I have it in my computer. From there, you want to go into your Google Drive. If you already worked with Disco Diffusion, you might already have an AI folder in your drive. If you don't, then create an AI folder. Inside of that folder, you have to create a folder that's called models. And inside the models folder, you will have to upload this file, which you downloaded from this website right here. Once that's uploaded, then you can go to Disco Diffusion. You go to the setup, uh, make sure that this is clicked to here, this is the name of the file that you just put into your Google Drive. And uh, I believe that will be it. Here's the path right here, Google Drive, My Drive, AI Models, and that's where it's at. And this is the output of the other folder. That's why you see another folder that says Table Diffusion in My Drive. Once that's uploaded and you have it on your drive and make sure it's finished uploading because it could be that it's taking time to upload because it is a little bit of a big file. So wait until it's fully uploaded, then come here press setup and this should start to, uh, oh yeah. Then you press connect to Google Drive. You connect to your account and then you press allow. Just like very similar to Disco Diffusion. All right, while that's going, you might wanna upload your video file. In this case, I'm using an old video, an old concept that I never actually used. So the video that I will be working with is this video. So this is a, a old concept that I had where the AI has, you know, it was like a window that when she opened the window, she, she was like AI. And then when she closed it, then the AI goes away. So I'm uploading that and that's fully uploaded. I right click and copy this path and then come to settings. So you come to settings, make sure this is in video input. Animation mode has to be in video input. And uh, you come down, come down. Everything is pretty much in default settings. And then here where it says video input, video init path, this is where you paste the video link. And extract in frame is basically how many frames you want Stable Diffusion to generate AI for. So if you put one, it's gonna do every frame of the video. So if you have a 24 frame video, it's gonna do 24 frames. If you do every two, that's gonna generate only 12 frames out of those 24. So after you put the video link in, then you come down to prompts, and this is where you will describe what you want the AI to do to your video, to each frame of your video. And these prompts will be already in here by default. Uh, you would wanna put it description in animation prompts for video input. What this, all these numbers mean is that from frame zero, it would generate what's described here. So in frame zero, it would do beautiful apple. Then at frame 20, it will change into beautiful banana and then so on and so forth. So in my case, I'm not gonna mess around with the changing the description for certain frames. I'm just gonna stick to zero. It will only use one description of, that I want for the entire video. Right here, uh, let's put a beautiful samurai woman. I don't know. Well, let's see. Let's see. <laughs> let's see what pops up. 
Uh, okay, so I will, for the sake of working with the most default settings I can, uh, I made the video file 512 by 512 because this is the default settings on it. Once I get a little bit more comfortable with stable diffusion, I will probably raise the pixels and see what happens if there is any change, if it gets better or worse, or if it doesn't make any difference. But for now, I'm just gonna stick to 512 by 512. Okay, and seed, uh, negative one. Here, I stick to that. Steps, uh, you had 50. I, the more steps, the more it would try to lean towards what your prompt is. Uh, sometimes if you go too high, it just messes, it makes it a little bit too crazy. So just stick to something, like stick to 50, see what happens. Add more if you, if you feel like it's gonna, if it's not adding the desired effect. Uh, so you come down, come down. Uh, I already changed this. So batch name is where the name of the folder in which this animation will be saved in your drive. So I just put window animation and uh, yeah. So seed behavior, uh, you want it to put it to fix so everything can be more coherent with each other uh, when it comes to each frame and each iteration. Right here in strength, you're gonna have zero. If you put zero, the video will, will not be affected at all. Stable diffusion is just gonna give you whatever your prompt is without even paying attention to your video. The higher you put the number here, 0 0.1, 2, 3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, the higher you get, the more weight the video will have. And at some point, it could be that the prompt doesn't affect the video at all because the number's too high. So I found that the sweet spot's around 0 0.4, 0 0.5, but you can experiment, see, see what works for you. But that's where I've seen it. And uh, that's it. So let's just test it out. Let's see if it actually works and see what kind of results we get. Uh, let's close the settings and then cross my fingers. Hopefully, hopefully it works. Run it. If you did everything right, you should see this rendering animation frame zero of 82, meaning there's 82 frames in this video. Yeah, so it's loading. It's doing something. Nice. Whoa, look at that. That's actually pretty sick. So that's at 0 0.4. I wonder what it will look like at 0 0.5. So while that's going, uh, let me show you where all these are being saved. So in your AI folder, you click on Stable Diffusion, and then you go into this folder, then into Windows Animation, and then you should have all your frames here. Yeah, and then right here, the cool thing about this this it shows you all the settings that you had so you can keep track of your settings uh, if you find like a sweet setting that you want to reuse uh the video is not coming out very nice to be honest instead of making the strength 0 0.4 let's try making it 0 0.5 let's make it a little stronger and run that you may notice that it, it makes individual images look so good though like it's crazy how good it looks you see, now it's following at, at 0 0.5. Now it's following more of the actual video. It's making it look a little bit more realistic, but unfortunately it's, it, the changes are so quite drastic from each other. That's the thing about stable diffusion. I haven't seen any animation unless you go really high where you just see consistency in the style. The frame, look at these are pretty consistent right here with each other, like her, the face. Yeah, I, like I like I like it to a certain degree, but then it starts to get too too crazy at some point. Um, let's try 0 0.6. It's I really feel like it's really high, but uh, let's try it. Okay, okay. See, like there's a little bit more weight on the actual frame of the video, so it's it's following the video a little bit more. Like right there, it actually looks how my wife has her hair, like this. Ah, okay. So now it's starting to follow the face a little more. The only thing is that I feel like it's the more steps, the more like style to it. I feel like it's, it looks like it's just like a filter on top of it. I'm just learning like you guys. So forgive me if uh, you were expecting some guy who was like a professional at this. The thing is like, I like to be honest about stuff. Like I, I like to teach stuff that I know, but I'm, I'm honest. Like there's some stuff I don't know. And there might be things that, you know, I talk about now and then later on I learned something different. So yeah, it seems to, I added some more steps to it. That's not what I want exactly. No, that's not working. So this is all experimentation. You experiment, see what works, see what doesn't work. Let's try 50, more to the desired effect. 
Ooh, that looks sick. You see, like, the, the lower you go on the number, the more artistic it gets. But then it starts to kind of get, uh, it starts to not follow so much of the video. And I think that's really where it's difficult uh, when it comes to the video part is like to get something that, to get multiple frames that are coherent, follow the video. It's not easy to do. Look at this, look at this mess that it created. Yeah, now it's, now it's going off the rails. So let's change the prompt a little bit. Let's try this anime, anime school girl. <laughs> Let's see what pops out of this. Ooh, not, not good. I'm not liking it very much. Okay, so I decided to go back to the video and edit the colors, make it a little bit more vibrant, added a little bit more contrast to it. Let's see if it makes a difference. I think it will make a difference. You know, we can help the AI figure things out by making sure the video has good lighting in it, that things are, things stand out. Because look at this, look at this, look at the results I'm getting. It's not very saturated. So maybe if I saturate the video a little more, it will, hopefully it will help with that. So let's try running this again. For the prompt I put, cyberpunk astronaut. I know, very original. Ooh, that's, that's creepy. But uh, I guess that's what I was asking for, right? Where's the astronaut though? So I was able to uh, get some somewhat decent results. Now uh, my wife looks like she's Asian for some reason. Uh, I did put, the reason my, why this might be is because I did put the strength really high and the animation prompt, I put beautiful anime woman. So I find it interesting that it actually you know, because the thing about, if you think about it, anime characters have big eyes, right? These huge eyes, uh, exaggerated facial, like they don't, they don't look like humans. And uh, it would be hard for the AI to try to follow the proportions of a real person's head, not just their head, but their facial features and still make them look uh, like anime. So, you know, this is actually pretty interesting. Uh, I like how it's changed the color of the hair of the clothes it seems to it kept it pretty intact everything this is the same color as the sweater my wife was wearing and like what i find interesting is that it looks like a human being like it doesn't look like like some some distorted like this distorted ai human you know and so this is why i'm letting it run because this is not something i would normally use because i would want something a little bit more you know artistic and not just like an alteration to the face slightly. Um, but I think it's, I think it's interesting. I like it. I like that it looks human. That's, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. I like that it looks human. And uh, yeah, I, I, I'm just curious and it's keeping it consistent, which is very cool. So yeah, this is strength at 0 0.6. It's very strongly weighing on the actual video. So that's why it's following the video so much. I'm trying to see if I made any changes here. No, I just changed the prompt. Everything else is the same. Let's just let this rock and see, see how it's gonna look at the end. All right, so this is done. Uh, let's check it out. I gotta say, there is something that I did notice about this while it was running and how you can get like the best results with the settings that we had. Come into Stable Diffusion. We go into our latest video. Here's a lot of trial and error that we had. Look at this, these look horrible. And then finally we got some decent results right here. So let's download these files and uh, put it into After Effects and see what it's gonna look like. So from here we go into our, our Stable Diffusion, wherever we save this folder at, we go to the first frame and make sure we have this PNG sequence checked and just import. And then we have this file right here, drag it inside here. And uh, if you might notice, since I did it in twos, it's shorter than this, than the original video. It's like super fast, bam. So what we have to do here is we have to slow this one down. We have to slow it down. Was it 250? It's close, 250. 
0.5. There you go. Close enough. So this is what we were able to come up with. Very interesting. It's pretty cool. This is a, the observation that I had is that you notice right here, it's pretty consistent and coherent, but like the like her face, it looks like it's the same, right? But it's because in the original video, my wife is not really changing her expression much and she's not moving her head around. She's turning her head here. And when there is those kind of movements, this thing kind of doesn't follow exactly, but it follows somewhat enough to where it does it does something you see that but that's pretty cool so yeah there you have it stable diffusion i'm barely getting started with this and so i'm learning as well so but i think this will get you started and hopefully you know you can come up with some crazier stuff than i can ever come up with so hopefully this was helpful hopefully you guys enjoyed it and got something out of it and yeah thank you for watching Peace.